In this video, I want to display how or demonstrate how you can use the web server on the IRC5 controller to host a web page and uh, subscribe towards a resource on the um, on the robot web services. Uh, so first off, um, when we use the web, want to use the web server on the controller, we need to put the the files that build our web page uh, inside this this search path. So in my case, for this demonstration, I have a JavaScript file and an HTML file. Um, so if we go over to the code. Uh, when you make a HTTP request towards, uh, or you want to make a subscription uh, using WebSockets towards uh, Robot Web Services, you need to first off send an initial HTTP request towards this resource. It's a POST request. You can find what headers are accepted in the uh, in the uh, Robot Web Services manual. Uh, but we need to have a body or some data and we have these value pairs here we have uh, an, a resource and this is kind of an identifier you can have multiple resources um, on one subscription in this case we only have one for simplicity's sake uh, and then we have the actual path of this resource of resource number one and then we have the um, priority of this resource So we post this towards uh, this endpoint or this URL. Um, and when this, uh, if this request is successful, uh, in the return header, we will find a URL tagged with location. And this is the URL that we want to extract because this is the URL we use for the WebSocket co connection. So we extract this URL. Uh, now we're setting up the WebSocket. Um, so we need to use uh, a specific sub protocol called robapi2 underscore subscription. Again, this can be found in the manual. Uh, and then we have, we set up our WebSocket um, with the URL we extracted here from the header of the response of the original request. And then we have a protocol, uh, sub protocol, uh, which is specified here. And then some callback functions for the events. Um, so that should be it. Uh, and if you um, were observant here, you could see that we never logged in, we never used any authentication, we never used any cookies. Uh, and this is because we run it on the, lo on the local server on the controller. Um, and the server will take care of the authentication for us. Uh, if this was a external server that you built yourself or, or, or something like that, any other server basically, you would have to include the authentication in the original request. You would have to extract the cookie from the original response and you would have to use this cookie uh, with the uh, with the WebSocket when you set that up to deal with the authentication. Uh, but let's try to open the, uh, the web page and see what happens. So uh, this is the URL which we go to. Of course, there is an HTTP colon slash slash before here, but this is the um, uh, we can actually just copy it in here. Uh, yeah, so this is the uh, the IP address. Of course, I'm, I'm running a virtual controller on my PC, so it's going to be local host for me. Uh, and the port number, uh, the default port would be port 80, but you can change that. And so I did to port 888. Um, but if you haven't changed it, it's going to be port 80 for you. So this is the URL which you're going to use to connect to the web server and the, the web page. And like you can see, the first thing that happens when I connect to this uh, is this sign in. Um, 
pop up. And this is where the server deals with takes care of the authentication for us. Uh, so let's try to log in. And it worked. And since uh, we didn't actually put anything, any output onto the web page, we have to open the uh, developer tools and look at the console. Um, don't think we have to care about that. Um, and then we can try to send the request and see if everything works. And it did. Uh, you can see I just printed out the WebSocket um, URL for some reason that we extracted. Uh, and then we have an indication that the WebSocket connection is established. So if I now open Robot Studio, uh, we should be able to uh, Open the AI simulator, find this uh, this input that we subscribe to, and the developer tools disappeared on me. Here we go. Uh, so if I click this, I expect some response here, uh, some gibberish, because I'm never doing any parsing of it or make it readable. So. Um, Let's see, and it seems like it works. You can actually see here, the uh, I value class uh, is the value of of the the IO, and it's one here. And then I turn it back to zero, and we can turn it back to one again. So the WebSocket works, um, and this is how you set up subscriptions with WebSockets on the web server. Uh, on the IRC5 controller.